first, I think we should just um, have a look at uh, dust suppression uh, as an application. And I know, uh, Henry, you would like to tell us a lot about, um, about this. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, in, in this left hand uh, picture, uh, it's an old picture, I have taken it many, many years ago, you can see how awful the situation can be in the sawmill. These white spots here, they are not snow, they are just uh, uh, dust which is uh, dropping down, down or uh, uh, floating in the air. I always call this that uh, it looks like this, this when it's dusting. So basically, uh, this situation, if you have a similar situation in your own application, please take a contact to us immediately. But anyway, the purpose of dust uh, suppression is to keep dust level safe and comfortable for staff. This is a legality and welfare matter. <clears throat> and also uh, prevent uh, dust to reach the level where the ignition is, is happening, uh, because uh, after, after this kind of situation, it will cause the explosion of, of area or production facilities. They are still rather, rather common in different places, unfortunately. Also, there is some positive size, side effects, which, for example, cooling during the summertime and increased comfort during cold and dry winter uh, seasons. Uh, many, many places, for example, when you have a lot of lumber inside in the production facilities, very dry atmosphere causes the tracking of the, of the wood. So it's also good for materials, not only for humans. One practical benefit is also that if the humidity level remains between 40 and 60 percent, it has a uh, it's it's a it's a positive impact against viruses. So they are not so active when the humidity level is reasonable level. Basically, there are two different uh, systems or technology to, to remove the dust. Uh, one, the oldest one is the fan systems and, and our systems is the second one. Next play, uh, slide, please. This is an um, example uh, how, how the water acts in, in different technologies. If we are discussing of low pressure against high pressure. If we are taking one liter water, spraying it out uh, through the good nozzle, and in low pressure systems, which means uh, four to six bar, the, the droplet uh, area can cover roughly 30 square meter. However, if you are choosing high pressure, taking same amount of the water, one liter, spraying it out, the, the area of the droplets covers uh, from 180 to 200 square meters. So it's six to seven times larger area. And we are still uh, discussing of same amount of the water. So this, this uh, water, if, if you are using all water for the process, you are uh, avoiding side effects like damping and all these kind of things. So it's it's very effective way to use water. Next slide, please. Here we have uh, an animation which uh, we have made uh, just to show how the systems or droplets works in the real life. There are big droplets and small droplets and you can see how they are working in the air and and uh, I think that this uh, uh, animation tells more than thousand words so please Kent yeah <laughs> Oh,
yes, hopefully this uh, gives some ideas how the system works when we are uh, discussing of small droplets against dust. You can see also in the right hand the uh, link to, to this animation and hopefully you can use and, and show it to others later on. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, here we have a typical uh, saw line, one machine. And, and you can see here, there are some nozzles spraying upwards and uh, they are just uh, uh, binding dust, which is floating uh, above the saw machine. Uh, at that, uh, it's very important actually that you try to bind the dust wherever it generates. So inside the saw uh, machine, it's, it's uh, very useful to, to have dust binding system also. So the most of the dust doesn't even start to fly around the production facilities. Also, it's important to, to use right size of the nozzles and place them the right places, not causing any extra problems with the, with the water mist. But basically when this system works well, you doesn't even notice that there's a water mist coming out. Next slide, please. So um, in this picture, you can see there's also nozzles spraying upwards. And uh, these kind of applications, when you are moving lumber uh, from place to another, there's a, a dust after saw, sawing process on, on the surfaces. And every time when the lumber is hitting somewhere or it's trans, uh, transferred, the dust starts to fly. So placing uh, these nozzles in the right places, you can easily prevent this, this flying dust. But it's also important when you are uh, placing these nozzles or pl uh, planning where to place them to, to understand how the airstream is, is moving inside the production facilities. Because um, if the nozzle is uh, installed in the wrong direction against the air stream, uh, uh, this, this uh, water mist doesn't go in the right place. So it, it's very important to understand how to and where to put uh, these, these nozzles. All these kind of processes like uh, sewing, cutting, uh, grinding, they are producing this uh, flying dust. And, and uh, by, by this way, you can easily uh, control the dust levels inside the production facilities. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a landfill, landfill application, but it can also be inside a sawmill, anyway in the place where dust, dust is coming. This is a conveyor dropping down to the next conveyor, some materials, which is typically dry and includes a lot of small particles, which of course starts to fly when they are falling down. Also in this picture, you can see the nozzles backwards. Uh, it's important that it's a uh, right size spraying in the right place. So uh, you, then, then you are able to avoid damping problem. Also, it's important that the nozzle is big enough. Otherwise, you get the dust <laughs> flying uh, outside of the water spray. So next please slide, please. This is one application of um, sorting. Also very typical, every saw line has this kind of uh, production part. Uh, in this picture, actually, it's difficult to see, but there's two nozzles. One is behind this white area where we are stating this high pressure robotomist, mist, and other one is uh, about two inches to the right side of this text. So you can see, you can hardly see the water mist there, but this is the right way to, to make it because you can hardly see it, but it works. <clears throat> so the right amount of water mist is a perfect solution. Uh, next slide, please. 
So when we are discussing of, of these uh, technologies, uh, fan technologies or, or high pressure reward emission technologies, there are certain features. For example, equipment cost. Uh, fan technologies, uh, for example, uh, the invest is, is higher. There's so much more materials. And for example, duct size, for example, their uh, diameter is easily 160 millimeters up to 400 millimeters. But in high pressure resistance, where we are using uh, pipes, the typical diameter of, of the pipe is from 10 to 12 millimeters. So it's relatively much smaller. So it means, it means that uh, less materials. It's also power consumption. Uh, our, our systems, they are using from two to four kilowatts and, and compared to big fans, it's nearly nothing. So the payback time is much shorter. Also the footprint, if, if you are uh, installing the fan system, it needs more space. And, and for example, in existing uh, facilities, uh, you need uh, pre-planning and also during the installation. I think that uh, production is rather, rather difficult because of the need of space. But instead, if you are installing uh, these uh, high pressure systems with the small pipes, they, you can easily do it during the work shift. And also it's e easy to install uh, because it's a flexible installation, small hoses for bushings, for example, or even without, uh, even without any, any holes, if you are using hoses, for example. So you can easily uh, go through construction areas by, by using these features. So basically, it's, it's a lot of benefits if we compare uh, this, this high pressure and fan technologies and, and uh, especially in, in the existing uh, facilities. So the next page, please. Um, in this uh, page, there are some uh, dust levels and safety limits. Uh, dust has various uh, negative influences on people and can cause diseases on of the uh, uh, respiratory systems, so for the lungs, for example. That's why we need to find every possible way to decrease, uh, especially flying dust. Um, the principle of dust control works as follows. The, wa uh, the water mist uh, droplets that are uh, atomized into the fine mist combine with the dust particles in the air and make them heavier and bring them down. So basically the same as you saw in the video or animation a little bit earlier. Also there are different kind of or different size of, of the droplets as there are also different size of the uh, dust particles also. But, the, but anyway, uh, by this, this way, when you are producing a lot of small droplets in the air, it's a much better possibility the droplet to hit the dust particle and together they are more heavy and falling down. Um, the size of the water drops uh, is a uh, essential criterion for the quality of the dust control. It's essential that the, the water droplets are uh, similar in size to dust particles to allow them to up, up, up here to them. It means that in this picture, for example, in the right hand, you can see that if the water droplet is rather big, it's just raining down and, and the dust particles are just avoiding to touch this, this droplet. Uh, typically, when we are discussing of, of uh, flying dust, the size of the dust, what they are measuring nowadays is 20 micron or smaller. 
and also the systems what we are using uh, with 70 to 80 bar we are about the same level of the size of the dro droplets that's why these fits perfectly together so the thumb rule is the higher pressure the smaller droplets the better efficiency of the uh, dust burning system also there's a risk this this explosion there are some some categories you can see that's one uh, example here but uh, but anyway uh, if there is some ignition you have enough dust in the air and it uh, uh, it comes some some flames it's sure that you will lose your production facilities or have has a big stop of production uh, it, it will be it will be damaged badly um, it's also uh, that the regulations that the value for uh, the inhalable dust fraction has been earlier 10 micrograms per cubic meter but the value will be decreased and even it will it is increased uh, decreased already to two milligrams per square meter or cubic meter sorry per eight hours shift in within eu it means that uh, if you are uh, if you are staying inside a production hall or production facility for example eight hours the level can be highest two milligrams per cubic meter uh, above this uh, level wearing the mask is mandatory and i can say that it's it's not nice to wear the mask whole eight hours in the production area uh, especially when it's hot or or uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> bad place <coughs> 